Most drummers are playing their double pedals all wrong. Are you one of them? In this video, I'm gonna reveal three critical tips to help you improve your double bass drumming, tips that drummers overlook, strategies you can implement, and mistakes you should avoid. Coming right up. To boost drumming speed and efficiency on our double pedals, we need to focus on these three key elements. The first thing we're gonna do is find the sweet spot in our pedal, okay? For the most part, when you're playing mid tempos, let's say 120 to 160 or 70, you're gonna be in about the center of that footboard. The reason for that is you get the maximum amount of leverage from your pedal, and it's not gonna be a lot more difficult to get the rebound from the beater swing. Now, if you play a little bit faster, you might wanna shift your feet a little bit more towards the front, because then that lessens the swing on the beater. And if you have them too far back, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to control. So when you're sitting down at your pedals and your foot is not completely under your knee, so from the ankle joint, and it's not back here like this, you can position it a little bit greater than 90 degrees to really help with the ease of comfort. And just feel a lot more efficient in your ability. The second thing we need to focus on is when we're looking to increase speed, we need to go from that full leg kind of caveman stomp to the ankle technique. So what I've done and what I teach my students is what I call this hybrid technique where you're pivoting from the balls of your, your toes here on the footboard, like this, and you're raising the heel with the contraction of the calf, okay? You're not lifting your leg. The contraction of the calf and bringing the heel up like this is actually causing your leg to raise. And what you'll notice there between the full leg and the ankle is that we're already using a lot of those same muscle groups so to transition it's going to be a lot more seamless. Okay and the third thing and I stress this importantly of course it can be frustrating with the amount of time it takes however we need to practice until it becomes automatic and that we're fluent with it. So we need to think of it like this. A lot of this is like learning a golf swing or how to serve with the tennis racket. And initially it feels kind of awkward and trying to get that motion down, but with that same repetition, it's going to feel a lot more natural. And of course, recording yourself is essential while doing so, so you can see where it starts to get un uncomfortable and you can make those tweaks and those changes as you progress on your drumming journey. That's the beauty of focusing on our footwork and our foot technique, is that we can get back to the music. It can become transparent in our playing, and we can worry less about the mechanics and more or less about the performance and how we sound. Now that you're on the right path to starting to optimize your footwork, you're ready to take your double bass drumming to the next level, aren't you? Now, by combining proper technique and a great approach to effective practice, you're gonna leave yourself and whoever watches you on the drums breathless. Damn! Imagine being able to play complex machine gun-like drum patterns with accuracy and speed. Now, the secret to this actually lies in mastering the ankle motion technique. And this is a game changer for double bass drummers. Now, I remember some of the drummers I first seen live playing the ankle technique. It actually blew my socks off. It sounded great. It looked like they didn't even have to use much effort behind the drums to actually be able to play those speeds live and pull it off. And the thing is, too, is that their feet moved in sync. Whatever they did with their hands didn't trip up their double bass drumming. Now, from then on, I knew I had to learn how to do this because, of course, I was trying to muscle it all the way through, and that wasn't going to work. So how do you unlock the full potential of your ankle motion? It's simpler than you think. So here's a quick step-by-step -step to actually get you started with this. Now again, sit comfortably behind your kit. It's all about ergonomics here. We wanna make sure our feet are in the sweet spot. Next thing we do, need to do is learn how to isolate the ankle. So instead of playing from the full leg like this, we need to be able to bounce that beater like a ball. And you're probably wondering, well, how do we do this without using the shin? Well, we need to keep this upper leg relaxed 
and we need to push the pedal down, get our foot out of the way for that pedal to come back. And we need to repeat the motion. So if you were to naturally just press it down and take your foot off, that pedal is going to have a natural swing. And what we need to do is utilize this to our advantage. And so we need to continually tell that pedal to keep moving at that speed or a quicker or slower rate of speed. Now here's a pro tip. If you're looking to apply the ankle technique and you're not above 170, 175, it's going to be quite difficult because you're going to be working against the geometry and the physics of your pedals. And so you're going to be working against that and trying to muscle it. And it's going to be really difficult to pull off. So if you're trying to do the ankle technique, at least start integrating it at 165, 170, 175 BPM. Now, next thing we need to do is practice this slowly, right? So the idea behind this is to understand how it feels to contract our calf back here. So we're going to lift our heel up like we're doing a calf raise, right? Like this. And then we're going to get our feet out of the way. So that's really what's happening when you start to speed this up. Now you'll notice too, sometimes your heel's gonna wanna come up here. That's not good because that's gonna force us to play from the toes and we're not gonna be able to get that full momentum from that initial amount of force we put into the pedal, right? So what we wanna do is kind of find that sweet spot with where our heel's at. So that beater can come back into neutral position, if not greater than, and allow us to keep bouncing that pedal. Okay, and again, there's a fine line in using your toes in the front of your foot. And if you are, a good indicator of that is the muscle burning in your shin. Okay, so that's something else we can develop. And move forward. Now, the biggest thing too is practicing going from that full leg kind of hybrid thing to the ankle technique. So what you want to do is practice at that tempo that you're at least, at least a little bit uncomfortable with. And start introducing that. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is play. Something like that. And if you're not there yet, I wanna introduce the single paradiddle. And why this is great is because it's an alternating pattern. It's gonna help develop that weak side that ultimately seems to frustrate us the most and we're gonna practice singles and doubles, which will build up our technique symbiotically. So right, left, right, right, and repeat. Left, right, left, left. Right, because those doubles are a lot more of that motion that's coming from our ankle, that's going to the balls of our toes, and is pivoting in the, those two hinge points. And so I understand the ankle technique can be overwhelming. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of different things we have to feel and understand. We've got to build up the left side. We've got to get the motion down. We have to sit properly. We have to make sure the technique is proper before we build our house on top of that. And so I, I, I don't want you to worry. It takes time and it takes practice to master. But in this next tip, I want to show you how you can actually implement it and apply it to your drumming today. And so speed without control is like driving a car without brakes. It's dangerous and it's ineffective, as we all know. So quick story here. I once auditioned for a band and I was showing off my flashy parts. And the thing was, is they turned to me, they looked at me and said, man, that's cool, but it doesn't sound accurate and it's quite inconsistent with time. And that's when I learned the importance of control. Now, the idea here to balance yourself on your drum throne is very important. We have to remain centered here because if we're lopsided, the opposite is going to happen with our lower half. And so when we go to add things with our hands, it can become really frustrating because you have all these ideas, but they can't be played on the drum set. And so one way to really help develop your balance is to play unisons. We're always taught to do this with our hands on a drum pad. Because what's happening, naturally, if you're a right foot lead player or a right sided player, then the left side is always lacking. And so how this works is our strong side is actually training our weak side how to play this effectively. And so when you do unisons with the feet, you can hear any small inconsistency with your playing. And so 
If the swing is off with the bat or with the beater just ever so slightly, it's gonna flam. And what we're looking for is one solid sounding hit. The idea here is to start practicing it with the full leg technique. It's gonna be really difficult to do with the ankle, so. You're gonna to wanna, to, again, bounce from the balls of your toes and use the heel up calf contraction idea. You're gonna keep applying pressure through the toes and then releasing it, right? So the whole adage of it only being the calf muscle is completely misconstrued and it's actually coming from both the shin activation and the calf activation. Just wanted to be clear on that as well. Now the idea with this is of course to practice it along to a metronome. And wherever you start to hear any inconsistencies as maybe you start to increase the tempo with it, then that's the area of focus you need to practice. Now, after doing this for a few minutes, you're gonna notice when you go back to alternating singles or any of these alternating patterns like the single paradiddle, that you're gonna be feeling a lot more accurate with that left side because it's learning from that strong right side. Now, to control more of this stuff, we can lead with the left side. I know, such a big breakthrough, right? We're always told to do this stuff. Leading with the left side on our hands, but when it comes to our feet, for some reason, we often overlook it. So again. Accuracy before speed, okay? And lead that with the left side. It doesn't matter what pattern, play it with the left as well. Now let's move on to a crucial aspect that a lot of drummers actually completely look over. Now, believe it or not, your gear actually might be holding you back more than your technique. I actually spent years on Iron Cobras before switching over to the direct drive with Axis. And the problem with that is switching from a chain drive to a direct drive proved to be quite challenging. It was completely different feeling. I had less control. It was more reactive. And it just took me quite a lot of time to actually get used to it. Come to find out my pedal setup was wrong this whole time. I made a few simple tweaks and I was on my way. It's important to note how you position your double pedals. If your feet are wider than they normally are if you were to sit down, then it's gonna be inconvenient and you're actually gonna expand the range of your hips and your legs, right? And it becomes really uncomfortable and it's hard to play effectively. Not forgetting to add as well that your hi-hats are gonna really change because of where they're positioned with the auxiliary pedal. And so it might be getting pushed out over here and it might be a lot more difficult up top. So what I do is I normally just sit down as I were at a table and I just put my feet on the ground. Not worrying about the angle of where my ankles are or where my toes are pointed. And that is exactly where I place my pedals. I don't wanna put it in a position where it feels really uncomfortable. And there's a lot of different debates about angling the bass drum and things of that na nature. And I find you can just angle your feet naturally on the pedal anyway. And it'll resolve all that issue without overthinking or overcomplicating things. The next thing I want to go over is spring tension. I want to get this stuff out of the way because I think it's more important to get this dialed in and just focus on practicing. So as far as spring tension is concerned, I put the leg, like the weight of my legs on the pedals like this. Okay, I'm not pushing in with my toes. I'm not pressing the beater into the kick drum head. And so I'm just letting the weight and gravity take the weight of my leg and put it onto the pedal. Okay, like so. Now, what you'll notice is if they're too tight, it's gonna feel a lot more resistant as you do apply pressure to the pedals. And you'll notice how difficult it becomes to get that beater close to the kick drum head. Now, if they're too loose on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's gonna be really easy to apply them here. Now, the reason why we wanna find out our spring tension is because we want the pedals to do a lot of the work for us. And we also don't want it working against ourselves either. So if they're too loose, it, you're gonna get some slap back under your foot, under your pedal. And if they're too tight, it's gonna be hard and you're gonna really have to muscle your pedals to actually play what you want or what you had in your mind. So that kind of porridge is just right idea is actually gonna be the most efficient approach for you where you can just let those pedals come back naturally to your foot, not leave a gap, mess you up with any timing or coordination, or just 
really making it more efficient so you can play faster with more comfort. And there you have it. Master these tips, you're actually gonna be ahead of most double bass drummers just following some of these quick ideas and tips. And so if you wanna learn more about double bass drumming, I put a playlist right up here. You can go check it out right now and I've got specific exercises to help you develop all of that that we just gone through in this video. Thanks so much for watching, my name's Cam and I'll see you in the next video.